everyone, in today's video I want to take you through how I have my Sony a7 III set up. So I'm going to take you through all my custom shortcuts, some items in the menu such as my picture profile which you guys ask me about all the time, my go-to focus settings as well as my go-to lens and things like that. So this is normally a video that we would film in the office but we're in Poland right now and it's currently spring and it's so beautiful outside so I thought we'd film in front of this blooming tree. It's very backlit. <laughs> Starting with the outside of the camera, the lens that I currently have on here is the Sony 28mm f2 and this is my go-to lens for when I'm traveling as I'm taking photos of the landscape so I like that it's wide and it's also wide enough for me to be able to vlog as I like to make videos for you guys when we're traveling. If I'm doing a portrait photo shoot or a fashion photo shoot then I would go for my Canon 35mm f1.4 Mark II and I have the Metabones 4 adapter that I use to be able to use my Canon lens on the Sony a7 III. The autofocus isn't as fast as when I use a native lens but it's actually pretty good considering it's an adapted lens so it works well for the type of portrait photography that I do. So starting off with some of the basic functions of this camera, I have my shutter speed in the front scroll, I have my aperture with the back scroll and then I've got my ISO set on a shortcut to work when you scroll the scrolly wheel in the back so you don't have to press anything, just roll it around and it changes the ISO. This one's particularly handy for when I'm doing video. I don't really change my ISO that much when I'm taking photos especially because I always shoot outdoors in bright sunlight but when I'm doing video for my vlogs and for YouTube videos I do tend to change the ISO quite a lot which is why I've got that shortcut set up like that. I hope this isn't too backlit. Where's the sun here? No, no. <laughs> We've got a lens hood on as well so I'm really sorry if it's flary but I mean it looks kind of pretty. We have like a rainbow. On the scroll wheel is where I have some of my most important shortcuts that make my life super easy when I'm taking photos. These are some of the most important things that I use all the time so I like to have them right there underneath my thumb while I'm shooting. Rather than wasting precious time going through the extensive Sony menu in order to be able to find what I need so I can just do it really quickly this way. So if I press to the right I get white balance pop up. I always use manual white balance so I can really quickly and easily change it from there. If I press downwards, I get to choose what focus area I'm using. Normally when I'm doing a portrait photo shoot or taking photos of people or animals even, I like to have it on flexible spot, which gives me a small focus area that I can use the touch screen to move it around where I need it. The reason I do this is because I want to have full control over where my focus is happening and when my focus is happening when I'm taking portrait photos. So I usually use flexible spot in combination with one shot focus. Mode. Sorry for the quick change in direction but that lens flare was just too much. I love a good lens flare but maybe not for a video like this. So anyway the next focus area that I use quite a lot is wide and this is a focus area that I specifically use when I'm using continuous autofocus and usually when I'm traveling. So the reason for this is because a lot of the time while I'm traveling I just want to take a couple of quick snaps of the places that I'm in. Maybe I'm taking a quick photo while I'm walking or at the car window or something like that so I want the camera to do a lot of the work for me just to be able to get that shot in that moment in time without fiddling around with my focus area and things like that too much. And last but not least on the scroll wheel if I press to the left we have drive mode. Normally I have it set in single shooting. This is what it's on 90% of the time but I have it there as a shortcut just in case I need to do continuous shooting or I want to put a two second timer if I'm taking a long exposure photo while I'm traveling or if I want to put it on a self timer to get some self portraits. A couple of other buttons that I have set up on the camera is C3 which when I press it takes me to a shortcut to choose what focus mode I'm in. Again I normally just have it on single focus AF but when I'm traveling as I mentioned I like to change it to continuous. The AF on button is set to magnify so if I'm manual focusing or I want to double check that focus is in the right area of a photo that's far away I like to use that. The next button I have set up is the trash or C4 and if you press this it switches between live view and the viewfinder. So normally when I'm using the a7 III I like to use the live view mode for some reason it just feels more comfortable and more natural for me 
but if it's getting too bright or there's too much glare on the screen and I can't see what's going on, then I just press the trash button and I'm able to use the viewfinder. And last but not least, the final shortcut button I have set up is AEL and this is for face autofocus. For me personally, I don't really like having face autofocus and eye autofocus on all the time because I find it a little bit distracting when I'm shooting portraits. I find that it kind of gets in the way of me being able to see someone's expression properly and I just prefer to have it as a shortcut so I only use it when I really need it if my focus point isn't in the right spot for a photo that I see happening. Those are all the shortcuts that I have set up for photo mode but I also use this camera to do video and to vlog with. So if we switch into video mode up here some of the shortcuts change. C3 are now audio record levels so I can easily change my levels depending if I'm filming with the microphone pointing to me or with the microphone pointing to someone else if they're further away. And the last shortcut that's different is C2. When you press this it brings up the steady shot options which allows me to change the focal length if I'm using a manual lens. With a lens like the 28mm Sony it is an automatic lens so it automatically selects that focal length for me. And now we're going to head into into the menu and get into focus modes and picture profiles and things like that. So as we all have grown to know and maybe not love so much, the Sony menu is absolutely huge. So I'm only gonna go through some of the important things that I actually use in the menu. So starting off with file format, I like to shoot in RAW, obviously, and I have the file type set to compressed. My aspect ratio is at three to two. In terms of color space, I have my camera set to sRGB, as well as my Lightroom and my computer and my Photoshop, they're all on sRGB. And this is basically because I only share my photos online. I very rarely print my images out. So sRGB is most optimized for sharing your images on the web. It's also important to keep all your color spaces the same on, from your camera to any programs that you use on your computer, just so the colors of your images don't shift every time you open them up in a new program. Next up on the menu is image processing. So as I mentioned earlier in this video, the first one is white balance and I always always use custom white balance so I have it set on the K Kelvin setting. <laughs> in terms of creative style I have it set on standard. I don't use any special picture profile or creative style with any of my cameras even on my Canon 5D Mark IV and threes that I used to use. I just have them all set on standard. I personally find that picture profiles are much more important if you're shooting video or even if you shoot in JPEG as you don't have as much control over a video file or a JPEG file as you do a raw image. So for a raw image I just shoot in standard and I'm able to change everything afterwards in Lightroom. And again like I mentioned the last one on this menu is picture profile which I have off. The next thing I wanted to show you guys is my record media settings. So I have two SD cards inside my camera and I record to both photo and video simultaneously. So both the SD cards are exactly the same which means I have an instant backup of all the photos and all the video that I'm taking. And last but not least is my custom menu. So all the shortcuts that I showed you earlier are also in this custom menu just for easy access just in case. A couple of items on this menu that aren't shortcut buttons include APS-C if we're using a crop frame lens or if we need a little bit more reach with one of our prime lenses in video mode and also format which is all the way down the bottom just in case so we don't press it by accident. But yeah that is is pretty much everything. So that is my entire Sony a7 III custom setup. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would love to hear down below what your favorite shortcut was, if there's any that you might add to your camera, and if you guys have any custom shortcuts that you've made that you find are really helpful as well, as I really, really love hearing from you guys. Um, but as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I make new videos every single Wednesday, so I will see you guys all next time. Bye.